So my first question for you today is going to be, what drew you into becoming an actress? It kind of was like an accident. I honestly was at a school that I was very unhappy with when I was young. I was being bullied and it, I was in a small town and you had to go to your district school. And my parents found this school that was a school for the arts that if you auditioned and you got in, anyone from any district could go. And that seemed like the only way that I could get out of my home school. So I auditioned and you had to do all the arts and I, I played piano and I danced a bit and we kind of didn't think I was going to get in, but I did. And I ended up going and from grades four to eight, I was at that school and we did a play every year. We studied Shakespeare and I just really fell in love with the language of Shakespeare because I, mm-hmm. at the time I was like so academic minded and I loved that and I loved being on stage and I really got drawn into theater. And I think that was kind of like my gateway into it. It kind of like developed and developed and developed. And I had a friend who had a TV show. She was on Heartland and she kind of like opened the door for me into film and TV and showed me that there were other options. And I just fell in love with telling stories in that way. So out of curiosity, was Heartland the first project you worked on or was there a different first project of yours? No, I've never been on Heartland. That was her show, but we just grew up down the street from each other. So it was just, you know. Okay, yeah. so it was just what the matter of connections. <laughs> yeah, it was just that she had the show. And so we kind of like talked about it and I started to understand that that was a world that was like possible. Um, my first TV job I think I ever did was like a docudrama series that was like um, reenacting real things that happened. And I think I was maybe like 15 years old. And then after that, it was Degrassi. And I just did like guest stars for a bit. And then my first recurring role was on Shadowhunters. My very important question for you, do you have a personal <laughs> favorite project you've worked on and, and why is it Shadowhunters? Shadow Hunters is so special to me. I mean, that was just such a mind blowing experience for me because I got Shadow Hunters because I worked the table reads for like two years. So I would go for two years every week or week and a half and I would fill in for the roles that weren't there. And it was amazing for me because I was watching these incredible actors work and I got to know them as people and I got to know the writers and directors, producers, watch these people work at such like a high level. And to me, I had never been a recurring on a show and it was just amazing to get to be a part of that. And they were so welcoming. I, you know, I was invited to their rap parties. I got to like be a part of their community and they were so warm to me. And then they just kept being like, oh, you know, you're so great as a reader. Like, we should find a part for you on the show. And I didn't think that that was real. And eventually it was. And that was just so special for me. I thought Helen was amazing in the books. I thought she was so cool. So that was like just so special that I I got to play Helen. Of course. I completely understand why. That would be (laughs) awesome. Like, as a fan of the show, it's really cool just seeing like all the behind the scenes content. So actually being there and being with the cast and everything, I completely understand, see like how that warmness kind of welcomed you right in. Out of curiosity, in terms of projects, do you feel like there's any big lessons you've learned over the years from working on other, on all these different shows and projects? So, I mean, I feel like I've learned so much about like the way that your personal attitude towards the work can permeate a set. I've been on sets where, you know, Like on V Wars, Ian and Adrian were so incredibly positive and like having people at the top of the cast that were so warm and positive and generous with their time, that really radiated downwards. And I think that that for me was such a lesson of like, if I'm ever leading a cast, I really want to be that way. And I want to be aware of the fact that like, even if you're having a bad day personally, you can't bring that to set. And it makes such a difference for everybody else if you're being positive and you're giving so much to the other actors and like really just learn so much about taking, you know, the time that you need as an actor on set to make sure that the work is what it needs to be at the end of the day, because it's such a fast moving environment. And sometimes you can get caught up in that and like not wanting to take that extra time, but it makes such a difference sometimes to just take that extra 10 minutes and, and let it settle in and it can, change the whole scene so well that leads perfectly into how what your experience with grand army was like yeah so how was what was on what was your experience on set like for that for that show i've never been on a set that was full of so many theater-based actors and also like in the production side you know our showrunner 
wrote the play and it, it was incredibly theater based. So there was a lot of room for that kind of work, which there usually isn't on a set. There was a lot of space for like processing those emotions. You know, we had an incredible intimacy coordinator and there would be times that after a table read that was particularly emotional, we would just all stop and like not go back to filming and we would sit and talk about what that was bringing up for us and what we were feeling and work through that first before we went back to filming. And sometimes on a set, there's not the space for that, but I feel like it was it was treated with such respect in that way. And the cast became very close and like a family because of that, I think there was a lot of trust. So especially with having the intimacy, intimacy coordinator on set, like how did that help? Did that help you at all draw inspiration for Anna for you? Or did you draw inspiration for Anna from other sources? Anna was interesting for me because, I mean, I was the oldest one on the set. So playing someone at 16, I had to really like try and remind myself. There were so many times that I was very judgmental of Anna of like, why is she doing that? That's so stupid. Like that's so, <laughs> and, and Katie would have to be like, Sydney, when you were 16, didn't you do things like that? And think like that, that that's what happens when you're 16, you know, you're emotional and you're impulsive and you're not seeing things with the full spectrum. And I had to really like have some grace and forgiveness for my character. And there were a lot of kids on the set that were still in high school. And um, so there was a lot of, of that kind of work for Anna. And then I think so much of it was, yeah, like working with the intimacy coordinator and going to those vulnerable places and my character is best friends with joey and um odessa who plays joey actually was living with me while we were filming so that came very easily so kind of jumping topics for a minute so obviously when the trailer came out for grand army a lot of people drew the obvious comparisons to like riverdale elite degrassi how do right. you think Grand Army stands apart from those other like serious, darker teen dramas? Those shows are so entertaining and they're wonderful and they're fun, but I think they also in a way try to make the dark parts of teen life or the hard parts of teen life seem like fun or like glamorous in a way. They're very um, pretty and they're shot beautifully. And Grand Army kind of does the opposite. Like it dives into the, the gritty, part of it and the way it's shot it feels like you're in there with the kids it feels like you're in the school with them it's not this like beautiful pretty picture it's kind of goes the opposite direction and there's times that you're watching and it's uncomfortable and i think it kind of tried to do the opposite thing of like it's not fun to go on these adventures of these dark things all the time it's sometimes it's like this is real life and this is what kids are dealing with we need to be able to have those conversations so i think it kind of tried to like de-glamorize those things in a way and then of course there's a lot of heavy material in the show it touches on current events so why do you think it's important for shows like Grand Army to aim their content at a younger generation? There's so much misconception about what it is to be young today. I mean, there are so many comforts now today. And I think that that makes a lot of adults look at youth and say, you have it so good. When I was your age, it wasn't like that. And I think it makes a lot of young people feel very misunderstood. And I think it's important for shows to shed light on what is going on in, in the lives of young people today so that it opens up conversation so that young people can watch these shows and feel seen and feel heard, see that their experience is not isolated, that other people have gone through this and that they can find a way to speak about that with their peers, with their parents, with their teachers. Like you might think that it's all Instagram and whatever, and it might be easier, but there's also a lot of things going on today that kids have to deal with that's really tough. It's worth talking about and opening up those conversations. Well, on a slightly lighter note, <laughs> since you're now part of the Netflix family, we gotta ask the obvious question. What does your Netflix queue look like? What is your binge right now on Netflix? Honestly, I feel like a few months ago, it was all like dead to me and kind of darker shows. And I think since quarantine, we've kind of lightened it up a bit. And now it's like Shit's Creek and we binged like Selling Sunset. And um, we've been watching kind of lighter, lighter shows a little bit. It's a lot of that and also true crimes. We're very into mm -hmm. true crime. So the obvious question that I got to really ask, 
Team Christine or Team Chrishell? Oh my God, Chrishell. Are you kidding me? It's ridiculous to me that so many people are like, I love Christine. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you be friends with her though? Like, I don't understand that. I mean, I'm all for strong women, but I think there's a difference between strength and just like cruelty. Oh what can God. we see coming up next for you as Grand Army makes its debut on Netflix? What's next on the docket? Strangely enough, I have two projects that I'm shooting with my fiance next, which I'm Ooh. very excited about. That's like an actor couple's dream. We had our first wardrobe fitting today for a TV show that we're shooting together. And we go to camera next week. So I get to shoot a TV series with him for several months and we play love interests. And it's like Ooh. a dream. Yeah. So on a similar note, how has COVID affected your career for right now? The first project we were supposed to shoot together was a film and it was supposed to start filming like right when the first wave kind of hit and it's been just pushed kind of indefinitely. So that definitely was held off because of COVID. And then we kind of like had self tapes through COVID. I shot a guest star just recently. We had friends that were going back to set, but like I have an autoimmune disease. So we were pretty happy to like stay at home <laughs> when, when it was in the thick of it. We were like, oh, we don't know if we really want to go back to set right now because sets are so many, it's just so many people. And we just weren't gonna chance it until it was like a little calmer. Of course. And then I just have one last question for you. Of course. So put yourself back in the shoes of 16 year old you with that school at that performing arts school. What advice would you offer someone in that same situation, that up and coming actor or actress just trying to make, make their break into the scene. The thing I always was like, I think I read this in a book or something. If life were to suddenly get easy, I doubt it would happen in high school, you know? And I think that that's something that I, when I was in high school, if someone told me that I'd be like, oh, thank God, like I'm doing fine. Trust your instinct more. You know when to believe in yourself. You know when to take chances. You know when things are, um, being presented a way that they're not. And I think when you're young, it's so easy to put your trust in other people because you think they're older than you and they know better. And um, sometimes you have to just trust yourself and what's right for you. And I think I would have told myself to just believe in me more. That's a beautiful end note. Thank you so much, Sydney, for this. I greatly appreciate your time. Thank and you so much. It was a, It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Oh, good to meet you. Thank you so much.